This video contains copyrighted material, which use, in accordance with U.S. copyright law, 17 U.S.C. Section 107 Fair Use, is allowed for the purposes of criticism, commenting, news reporting, teaching, and or research, and is not an infringement of copyright. This is a non-profit, educational video, with the purpose of promoting social, political and economic If you spare a little of your imagination as you watch this film as it runs, you will see many things that answer many questions. You will see living forms, living amoeba, almost animal-like creatures. You will see continents being formed, the Earth itself coming into existence, explosions, eruptions, atomic explosions and bombs. You can see all this and watch it before your eyes. But any, everything owes its existence solely and completely to sound. Sound is the factor which holds it together. Sound is the basis of form and shape. In the beginning was the word and the word was God. We are told that this is how the world began and how creation took shape. If we put that into the modern idiom and say that into the great voids of space came a sound and matter took shape. Please watch carefully.
empty your mind, be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. This is a water droplet that you're going to see. And in this water droplet, a frequency uh, is being pumped into this water droplet. As the frequency uh, is mirrored in the droplet, you'll actually see the geometric patterns in that droplet. Now what's happening, and the reason that this is so significant, is because we're going to do a frequency sweep. We're going to go from low frequencies to higher frequencies. And what you'll find is this. You'll see that in the lower frequencies, the patterns are less complex. And in the higher frequency, the patterns are more complex. So we're going through a sweep from lower to higher frequency. I'm sharing this with you now because Earth is essentially going through a frequency sweep. Our fundamental pulse, our base pulse that has hovered around 7.8 cycles per second now is changing. And again, there's a lot of controversy about what the change is, and we're witnessing the change. As we go through our planetary shift of this pulse, patterns of energy must change to respond to that, just as patterns of energy in this water are changing to respond to this, to this pulse. And we'll begin with simply the concentric patterns in the water as the frequency begins. Every once in a while, we'll reach a key threshold resonance, such as that moment right there. And in that key threshold resonance, the entire pattern morphed into a more complex expression of itself, simply because the frequency changed. Now watch what happens. The frequency is still increasing. Now watch what happens. As we reach a, another key threshold resonance, this entire pattern will morph into a beautifully uh, and more complex pattern of itself. Again, and again. And look at this pattern right here. Look what you're seeing right here. Look at the beautiful geometry. Here is a perfect cube. There's a perfect tetrahedron, a star tetrahedron. In two dimensions, we've got the octahedron. Very powerful images of sacred geometry held in place simply because we've achieved the vibratory pattern that allows that in this water droplet. And as the vibration increases, these patterns will become more and more complex. You can see the pulse from where you are. Can you see the pulse actually in, uh, in the water? As we go into this, the last set of the frequencies, what you'll see is that the entire, and you'll watch along the outer perimeter, the entire pattern reaches its greatest level of complexity, and then it goes back. Uh, as the frequencies drop, it goes back to what it was, the concentric circles, as it was originally. It almost looks alive. You know, you've been offered many times the concept that thought is vibration. Have you ever considered that emotion is vibration? Feeling is vibration. We are always feeling something. We are always emoting something. We may not always be aware of what that is. We carry those patterns with us. As we hold a feeling and an emotion, what we're doing is we are holding a vibratory pattern in the liquid crystal of our bodies. Feel. It's now been scientifically shown to be provable. And what you're going to see now are what happens to particles of sand and other various particles when a sound resonates across a plate and, and resonates those particles in tune with the sound. Because when we think we're not just sending out a wave which resonates the energy, we're sending out on a frequency outside of the range of human hearing, we're sending out a sound. Everything is sound. 
when we think a sound goes out, it resonates the energy around us to that sound. And what you're about to see are some pictures that show this happening when sound is introduced and how sound takes random particles and turns it into astonishing form. And that's how this universe was created. In the beginning was the word, and the word was sound. So what you're looking at here is merely particles formed into patterns by sound. Um, they were all over the place to start with, just in random positions on the plate. As soon as the sound appears, they form into these patterns because um, everything is sound. And it is sound that turns uh, matter and energy into form. Patterns on wings of uh, birds and insects are all the manifestation of the sound vibrations. Every organ in our body uh, resonates to a certain frequency. And when our thoughts um, and emotions and stress uh, and the vibrations that that causes de-harmonize the vibrational state of our various parts of our body, we become ill. So we think ourselves into illness because we're affecting the vibrational state of the body. And so every time you think and feel, you're resonating a frequency which is making the energy around you resonate to the same frequency. What you give out is what you create. Here you're seeing mini galaxies um, just formed by particles and sound. This is how the galaxies and the universe and the solar systems were formed and continue to be held in the structure they're in through sound. If the sound changes, the matter changes, the energy changes. So when you look at what it says in texts like even the uh, Old Testament, in the beginning was the word and the word was sound. And sound is everything. When you think and feel, you create in sound. This is how the heart beats at a certain resonance. All you're looking at here are interacting frequencies making a beat. And so um, while the frequency of the heart is uh, and, uh, at the right uh, level, it beats in the normal number of beats a minute. But when we become stressed, we affect that frequency and the heart beats faster. And so everything is sound, even the human heartbeat and the interacting frequencies that make it happen. And we've seen the galaxies and now here are the planets forming just on a plate from particles caused by sound passing through them. Uh, this planet has a resonant frequency. It's called the Schumann cavity resonance. But basically, while that frequency holds, the planet will hold its present form. If the frequency changes, the form will change. It's the same with everything. And here you see sound being passed through iron filings and particles and therefore creating form once again. And from these pictures, it's hardly difficult to uh, see how the human body is formed through sound resonating energy and how that physical form is held as long as that sound matrix is held. But once that changes, the physical body changes. So there you've seen, with stunning effect, how sound creates form, how galaxies are created, how planets are created. And all those uh, planets, balls of um, particles, all those revolving galaxies were merely particles turned into that form by sound. This next series of photographs are the work of Japanese researcher Mr. Masuru Emoto from his book, The Message from Water. Mr. Emoto's work provides factual evidence that human vibrational energy, thoughts, words, ideas, and music affect the molecular structure of water. Please remember that water comprises over 70% of a mature human body and covers the same amount on our planet. Water is the very source of all life. This photo shows the beautifully formed geometric design of the Yushi Spring water. 
This next photo is from the Shimanto River, the last clean spring in Japan. Notice the extraordinary geometric forms. The fact that the molecular structure of water can be affected by our consciousness, our intent, and our sounds is extremely important. This photo is from the Mount Cook Glacier in New Zealand. Mr. Moto has been visually documenting these molecular changes in water by means of his photographic techniques. He freezes droplets of water, then examines them under a dark field microscope that has photographic capabilities. His work clearly demonstrates the diversity of the molecular structure of water and the effects of the environment upon the structure of the water. This photo is from the fountain. Lourdes, France. This photo is from contaminated water from the Yodo River in Japan. In this photo we can compare the contaminated water with clean stream water. Look at the difference. Mr. Omoda decided to see what effects music would have upon the structure of water. He placed distilled water between two speakers for several hours while playing different music and then photographing the crystals that formed after the water was frozen. This photo is of water being exposed to Beethoven's Pastorale. This photo is the effect of box air for the G-string on the water. This photo is water exposed to Chopin's farewell song. This next photo is water being exposed and affected to music that was designed for healing. This photo is of water being exposed to the Kawachi folk dance. This photo shows the effect of heavy metal music upon the water. Here now we can compare the effects of healing versus heavy metal music and what happens to the water molecules. Mr. Omoto decided to see how thoughts and words affected the formation of untreated distilled water crystals by typing words onto paper and then taping this paper onto glass bottles overnight. This photo shows the effects of the words, thank you. This next photo shows the effects of the words love and appreciation. This photo shows the effects of the words you make me sick, I will kill you. And here we can compare the effects of thank you with the you make me sick, I will kill you. Very, very different geometric forms being incurred through the intention. Now this photo is of a very polluted and toxic water from the Fujiwara Dam. Here now is the same water from the Fujiwara Dam after a Buddhist monk had offered a prayer over it. Prayer, that sound coupled with intention, seems to have an extraordinary ability of restoring water to its natural, harmonious, geometric symmetry. And in this photo we can compare the toxic water and then the effects of praying over the water. It's really quite impressive. These photographs that we have just seen show proof that not only does sound have the ability of affecting and changing physical structure, but that with regard to the molecular structure of water, that our intent with our sound is extremely important. This may have great implications for the future of both personal and planetary harmony and healing. To what extent is water capable of picking up information? What does it perceive? And how does it remember it over time?
The Aerospace Institute in Stuttgart has discovered a relatively simple way of making the structure of a drop of water visible. The researchers have had their efforts rewarded by insights into a very beautiful world. Each drop has a face of its own, unmistakable and unique. Why are the individual drops so different from one another? We got a lot of people to come to a lecture hall here at the Institute, gave them all the same water, had them make drops at exactly the same time, collected all the drops and then discovered that each individual produced different images from the same water. And here you can see the results. Here on the right you can see that the images of the individual students are different, but those made by a given student are all quite similar. This is the work of the first experimenter, this one here from the second, this from the third, and this from the fourth. Individually they can quite easily be reproduced, but you would never have thought that they were all from the same water, because when you compare the images from the different people, you see some big differences. Then we undertook experiments to find out whether things changed when we put something into the water. A real flower was placed in the water. A while later we took a drop of water, and here you can see one of the pictures. And you can see it in this picture. It's the typical image you get when you put a flower into water. You could recognize the flower in every single drop in this glass, of course. That can be reproduced and has significance. And if you were to put a different flower in here, for example, a sweet William flower, then all the drops of this water would look like sweet William. The statement that water has a memory practically changes our whole way of looking at the world, of course. Let's travel down the Rhine in the figurative sense. The water is flowing down the Rhine, picking up information everywhere it goes. So the water has more information at the mouth of the Rhine than it had at the source. And the Dutch, living at the mouth, when they drink that water, they're also drinking all that information. Thus, the world's oceans would no longer be something that separates us, but instead a giant storehouse of information, and the rain would perhaps be a data medium carrying information to the world. Now, Mr. Emoto speaks of the thought or intent being the driving force in all of this. The science of how that actually affects the molecules is unknown, except to the water molecules, of course. And it's really fascinating when you keep in mind that 90% of our bodies are water. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? If thoughts can do that to water, imagine what our thoughts can do to us. February 2nd, 1966, I'd been in the polygraph field full-time for 18 years, and this particular morning, I'd been working all night in the laboratory, and uh, I decided to water a plant in the lab, very similar to the plant uh, here, the Cena cane plant. My thought was that as the moisture arrived to the leaf of the plant, I should uh, plant should be a better conductor, and I should get a reading on the chart. Well, strangely enough, I didn't get this at all, and uh, in fact, it did just the opposite. Instead of, uh, the, instead of the tracing edging upward as it should have on the chart, it uh, went into sort of a wild excitation, very similar to the, the first part of a human taking a polygraph test. But then it occurred to me, just about 14 minutes along, what would be the real optimum threat to the well-being of a plant. In fact, the imagery of fire entered my mind, and I not only thought, but I fully intended to burn the very leaf that was being tested with a match. Now, I had no matches in the room at the time, and uh, I don't smoke, and I had to go next door to my secretary's area to, to, to get a match. But the interesting thing is that right at the split second that that imagery of fire entered my mind. The tracing reflecting the changes in the plant just went right off the top of the page. 
And the only thing that occurred at that time, no lighting of a match, nothing else, merely the imagery of fire. And I must say that as of 14 minutes along in that initial observation on the morning of February 2nd, 1966, my life just hasn't been the same. During the next six hours, at some undetermined moment chosen by a randomizer, these brine shrimp will fall to their deaths in boiling water. In another room, completely separate from his laboratory, Baxter has placed a philodendron plant, a polygraph, and a videotape recorder. Carefully, he places a leaf between a pair of electrodes that will monitor the electrical activity of the plant. For the automation of this experiment to be successful, I have to get a certain distance away from my lab so that my consciousness won't affect the results. The results of each night's work must be carefully analyzed and recorded. In spite of his high percentage of successful results, only a few daring individuals from the scientific establishment have come forward with offers to replicate his experiments or test his results. The great majority are content simply to condemn his efforts without taking the trouble to investigate their validity. A few brine shrimp die and a plant feels their death. I think it's the, the smallest of the event that makes it so significant. It means that even on the lower levels of life, there's a profound consciousness or, or an awareness. That of all the many different organisms that are on the planet Earth, common sense dictates that mammals are the most advanced, capable of thought, reasoning, and emotions. But shocking new evidence suggests that plants may possess these abilities as well. And even more mysterious, they may have the power of ESP. Is this science fiction? Or science fact? Researchers attempt to establish interspecies communication. Is that weird or what? Our story begins in Italy where Carlo Cignazzi runs a 24-acre vineyard in the Tuscan Hills. A music lover Carlo was well known to serenade his grape pickers with an accordion. But in 2002, Carlo would stumble upon the true amazing power music could have when, as an ecologically friendly way of controlling pests from ruining his crop, Shignazi placed loudspeakers all around his vineyard to play 24 hour a day classical music. The pests were frightened away, but that's not all. Something else happened, something bizarre. The grapevines nearest the speakers grew 50% larger than the rest of the crop, matured more quickly, and even grew towards the source of the music. It's fantastic to see, it's impossible to, to, to believe. The bunches are four times more. For example, they leave two times more. So the sound is like, uh, like light. 